This house isn't just yours anymore. It's ours, Marla declared, her voice cutting through the silence like a knife. My heart sank as I watched the smug expression spread across her face, her words shattering the peace Eli and I had fought so hard to create. What do you mean? Ours? Eli demanded, his brow furrowed in confusion. We built this home for our retirement, not for you and Nathan to move in. Marla's laugh was cold and condescending. Oh, please. You didn't honestly think we'd let you two enjoy this place all to yourselves, did you? She gestured around the spacious living room, her gaze lingering on the floor-to-ceiling windows that overlooked the pristine backyard. This is the perfect place for us to start our family. I exchanged a worried glance with Eli, my stomach twisting into knots. This wasn't how it was supposed to be. We had spent years planning and saving for this moment, envisioning a quiet, peaceful retirement surrounded by nature, far away from the chaos of the city. But here was Marla, barging in and declaring our sanctuary as her own. Marla, we've discussed this, Nathan interjected, his voice strained. Mom and Dad don't want us living here. It's their home. And what's yours is mine, remember? Marla shot back, her eyes narrowing. Or did you forget that little detail? Nathan wilted under her gaze, and my heart broke for him. I had always known Marla was bad news, but I had never imagined she would stoop to such levels of manipulation. Eli stepped forward, his jaw set in determination. Marla, you have no right to make demands like this. This is our home, and we will not let you take it from us. Oh, Eli, Marla said, her voice dripping with false sweetness. You're getting old, and you know it. You and Renee won't be able to keep up with this place for much longer. You'll need our help. My blood boiled at her words. I had spent my entire life caring for others, and I wasn't about to let some entitled brat treat me like a helpless old woman. We don't need your help, Marla, I said, my voice firm, and we certainly don't need your constant disrespect and demands. Marla's eyes flashed dangerously. We'll see about that, she hissed. This house is ours now, and there's nothing you can do about it. As she stormed out of the room, dragging a reluctant Nathan behind her, I felt a surge of determination rise within me. Marla had crossed a line, and I was done being a doormat. It was time to take action and reclaim our lives. I stared out the window, watching the sun dip below the trees that lined our backyard. It was a peaceful sight one that should have filled me with a sense of contentment and happiness. But instead, all I felt was a growing sense of dread. Mom, can we talk? Nathan's voice startled me out of my thoughts, and I turned to see him standing in the doorway, his face etched with worry. Of course, honey, I said, gesturing for him to come in. What's on your mind? Nathan hesitated, his eyes darting around the room as if searching for the right words. It's Marla, he said finally. I don't know what to do. I suppressed a sigh, trying to keep my emotions in check. What has she done now? Nathan shook his head, a bitter laugh escaping his lips. It's not just one thing, Mom. It's everything. She's demanding, manipulative, and she treats you and Dad like dirt. I know, sweetie, I said, reaching out to take his hand. Believe me, I've seen it too. Then why do we put up with it? Nathan asked, his voice rising in frustration. Why do we let her walk all over us like this? I paused, considering my words carefully. You know, when you first brought Marla home, I was so excited for you. I thought she was the one, the woman who would make you happy and complete our family. Nathan's face fell, and I could see the shame and regret in his eyes. I'm sorry, Mom. I should have listened to you and Dad. You tried to warn me, but I was too stubborn to see the truth. It's not your fault, Nathan, I said, giving his hand a gentle squeeze. Marla is a master manipulator, and she's had years to sink her claws into you, but enough is enough. What do you mean? Nathan asked, his brow furrowed in confusion. I took a deep breath, steeling myself for what I was about to say. Your father and I have been talking, and we've decided that we can't let Marla continue to disrupt our lives. It's time to take a stand. Nathan's eyes widened in surprise. What are you going to do? I don't know yet, I admitted. But I'm not going to let her ruin our retirement. We worked too hard for this, and she's not going to take it away from us. Nathan nodded slowly, his expression a mix of fear and determination. Whatever you decide, Mom, I'll support you. I'm done with Marla's games, too. As we embraced, I felt a sense of resolve wash over me. Marla had pushed us too far, and it was time to push back. I didn't know how it would end, 
But I knew one thing for certain. Our family was stronger than her, and we would find a way to reclaim our peace. I can't believe the nerve of that woman, Eli exclaimed, pacing back and forth across the living room. She's gone too far this time. I nodded in agreement, unable to hide my own anger. I know, honey. Marla's demands have gotten completely out of control. Out of control? Eli stopped in his tracks, his eyes blazing. That's an understatement. Do you know what she did today? I shook my head, dreading the answer. She came to me with a stack of bills and demanded that we pay them, Eli said, his hands clenched into fists. She said that since we're all family now, we should be sharing expenses. What? I gasped, my jaw dropping in disbelief. She can't expect us to pay her bills. That's not even the worst part, Eli continued, his voice growing louder. When I told her we couldn't afford to take on her debt, she threatened to kick us out of our own home. She wouldn't dare, I said, my heart pounding in my chest. Oh, she dared. All right, Eli said, his voice dripping with contempt. She said that since she and Nathan are paying the mortgage, they have a right to do whatever they want with the house. I couldn't believe what I was hearing. Marla had always been manipulative and demanding, but this was a new low, even for her. That's it, I said, my voice shaking with anger. I'm done playing nice with her. It's time to put an end to this madness once and for all. Eli nodded, his expression grim. I couldn't agree more. We've been pushovers for too long, and it's only emboldened her. What are we going to do? I asked, my mind racing. I have an idea, Eli said, a glint of determination in his eyes. We're going to call a family meeting and lay all our cards on the table. We're going to expose Marla for the manipulative, conniving woman she is, and we're going to make it clear that we won't tolerate her behavior any longer. I could feel my heart pounding in my chest as I considered Eli's words. It was a risky move, but I knew he was right. We couldn't continue to let Marla walk all over us. It was time to take a stand. Okay, I said, taking a deep breath. Let's do it. Let's call everyone together and put an end to this once and for all. As we made our plans, I could feel a sense of resolve building within me. Marla had pushed us too far, and we were finally ready to push back. It was time to reclaim our lives and our home, no matter what it took. What do you mean you're taking the master bedroom? I demanded, my voice rising in disbelief. Marla simply shrugged, her face a mask of indifference. It's the biggest room in the house, and it has the best view. Nathan and I deserve to have it. I could feel my blood pressure rising, my hands bawling into fists at my sides. This is our home, Marla. We built it for our retirement, and we get to decide who stays where. Oh, please, Marla scoffed. You're just a couple of old people who are going to need our help to take care of this place. The least you could do is give us the best room. How dare you, Eli roared, stepping forward with fury in his eyes. We've worked our entire lives to afford this house, and you have no right to come in here and make demands like this. Marla turned to face him, her expression cold and calculating. You forget that Nathan and I are paying the mortgage now. That means we have a say in how things are run around here. I felt my heart sink as I realized the implications of her words. She was trying to take control of our home, using Nathan's financial support as leverage. That's not how this works, Marla, I said, my voice shaking with anger. This is our house, not yours. We decide who stays where, and we're not giving up the master bedroom to you. Marla's eyes narrowed, and I could see the fury building behind them. Fine, she spat. Have it your way. But don't come crying to me when you can't keep up with the maintenance on this place. With that, she turned on her heel and stormed out of the room, leaving a stunned silence in her wake. Mom, Dad, I'm so sorry, Nathan said, his voice trembling with shame and regret. I never meant for things to get this far. I took a deep breath, trying to steady my nerves. It's not your fault, Nathan. Marla is the one who is pushing us to this point. But I should have done something sooner, Nathan insisted. I should have seen what she was doing and put a stop to it. Eli placed a hand on his son's shoulder, his expression one of understanding. It's not too late, son. We can still put an end to this. Nathan looked up at him, his eyes filled with uncertainty. How? Marla is never going to back down. She thinks she has the upper hand. I stepped forward, my mind made up. Then we'll have to take the upper hand back. I said, my voice firm with resolve. 
It's time we showed Marla that she doesn't control us or our home. Eli nodded in agreement. Your mother's right, Nathan. We've been too passive for too long. It's time to take action and reclaim our lives. As we began to discuss our plan, I could feel a sense of determination growing within me. Marla had pushed us too far and we were finally ready to push back. It was time to take a stand, no matter the consequences. Are you sure about this? Nathan asked, his voice laced with uncertainty. Once we start down this path, there's no turning back. I exchanged a glance with Eli, my resolve unwavering. We're sure, honey. Marla has left us no choice. Nathan nodded slowly, his eyes filled with a mixture of fear and determination. Okay, then. Let's do it. As we began to lay out our plan, I could feel a sense of anticipation building within me. We were finally taking back control, and I couldn't help but feel a surge of pride at the strength of our family. We'll start by gathering evidence, Eli said, his voice low and serious. Everything Marla has done, from the financial manipulation to the emotional abuse, we need to document it all. I nodded in agreement, and we need to be discreet about it. We can't let Marla catch wind of what we're doing. Nathan shifted uncomfortably in his seat. I don't know how much help I'll be, he said, his voice laced with guilt. Marla has kept me in the dark about so much. That's okay, son, Eli reassured him. We'll work together to uncover the truth. The important thing is that we present a united front. As the days passed, we began to gather evidence of Marla's misdeeds. Bank statements, emails, and even recordings of her outbursts. Everything we could find to expose her true nature. Look at this, Eli said one evening, shoving a stack of papers across the table. She's been draining Nathan's accounts for years, using his money to fund her lavish lifestyle. I shook my head in disgust, anger, and betrayal coursing through me. How could she do this to her own husband? Nathan's face was pale, his eyes haunted. I never knew, he whispered. I trusted her completely. That's how she operates, I said, placing a comforting hand on his arm. She manipulates and deceives until she gets what she wants. As we continued to piece together the puzzle of Marla's deceit, I could feel a sense of dread settling in my stomach. We were uncovering a level of betrayal and manipulation that went beyond anything I could have imagined. We have to stop her, I said, my voice firm with determination. No matter what it takes, we can't let her continue to control us like this. Eli and Nathan nodded in agreement their eyes filled with the same resolve that burned within me. We were a family, and we would fight for our freedom together. As we solidified our plan, I couldn't help but feel a glimmer of hope amidst the darkness. We were finally taking a stand, and I knew that no matter what happened, we would emerge stronger and more united than ever before. What is all this? Marla demanded, her eyes narrowing as she swept her gaze across the living room. I took a deep breath, steeling myself for the confrontation, Sit down, Marla. We have something to discuss. Marla's lips curled into a sneer, but she complied, sinking into the armchair with a defiant air. Well, let's get this over with. We know what you've been doing, Eli said, his voice heavy with accusation. We've seen the evidence. Marla's eyes widened, but she quickly regained her composure. I have no idea what you're talking about. Don't play dumb with us, Marla, I spat. We know about the money you've been stealing from Nathan, the lies you've told, and the ways you've been trying to manipulate us. Marla's face contorted with rage. How dare you accuse me of such things? We have proof, Marla, Nathan said, his voice shaking with emotion. Bank statements, recordings, everything we need to expose you for who you really are. Marla's eyes darted around the room, her mind racing. You're all delusional, she hissed. This is some kind of sick game you're playing. It's not a game, Marla, I said, my voice heavy with the weight of her betrayal. We know the truth, and we're not going to let you continue to control us like this. Marla sprang to her feet, her hands balled into fists. You can't do this to me, she screamed. I'm your family. You were never family, Eli said, his voice cold and hard. You're a parasite who latched onto our son and tried to suck us dry. Marla's eyes flashed with fury, and for a moment I thought she might lash out. But then— she seemed to deflate, her shoulders slumping in defeat. Fine, she said, her voice barely above a whisper. You win. No, Marla, I said, my heart heavy with sadness and anger. We all lose. We lose the trust we had in you. 
the family we thought we could be, but we're not going to let you take anything else from us. Marla stared at me, her eyes filled with a mix of rage and fear. You'll regret this, she hissed. You think you've won, but I'll make sure you pay for this. With that, she turned and stormed out of the room, leaving a heavy silence in her wake. It's done, Eli said, his voice tinged with relief. She knows we're on to her now. I nodded, feeling a sense of weight lift from my shoulders. Yes, but this is just the beginning. We need to take steps to protect ourselves from her retaliation. Nathan nodded, his eyes filled with determination. I'll start the divorce proceedings immediately, and we'll make sure she has no legal claim to this house or any of our assets. As we began to discuss the next steps, I felt a sense of hope blooming within me. We had faced down Marla's deceit and emerged victorious. It wouldn't be easy, but we were finally on the path to reclaiming our lives. I can't believe you're doing this to me. Marla shrieked, her voice echoing through the living room. Nathan stood firm, his eyes filled with a resolve I had never seen before. It's over, Marla. I'm filing for divorce. Marla's face contorted with fury, and for a moment I thought she might lash out physically. You can't leave me. We're meant to be together. No, Marla, Nathan said, his voice heavy with sadness and regret. We were never meant to be together. You manipulated me from the start, and I was too blind to see it. Marla's eyes darted around the room, searching for an ally. Renee, Eli, please, you have to talk some sense into him. I shook my head, my heart hardening against her, please. It's over, Marla. You've brought this on yourself. Marla turned back to Nathan, her eyes pleading. Please, baby, don't do this. We can work things out, I promise. Nathan's expression remained resolute. It's too late for promises, Marla. I've already started the proceedings, and I have all the evidence I need to ensure you don't get a penny from me. Marla's face twisted into a mask of pure hatred. You're going to regret this, she hissed. All of you. I'll make sure you pay for this betrayal. We're not the ones who betrayed anyone, Marla, I said, my voice heavy with the weight of her actions. You betrayed us, our trust, our family, everything. Marla's eyes flashed with fury, but she seemed to deflate, realizing the futility of her situation. Fine, she spat. Have it your way. But don't come crawling back to me when you realize what a mistake you've made. With that, she turned and stormed out of the room, leaving a heavy silence in her wake. It's done, Nathan said, his voice tinged with relief and sadness. She knows it's over. I nodded, placing a comforting hand on his arm. You did the right thing, honey. I'm proud of you. Eli stepped forward, his expression one of grim determination. This isn't over, though. We need to take steps to protect ourselves from any retaliation, Nathan nodded. I've already started the legal proceedings, and I'll make sure she has no claim to any of our assets or this house. As we began to discuss the next steps, I couldn't help but feel a sense of closure washing over me. We had faced down Marla's manipulation and deceit, and we had emerged victorious. It had been a long and difficult road, but we were finally on the path to reclaiming our lives. Please, Renee. Marla pleaded, her eyes brimming with tears. You have to talk to Nathan. He's making a terrible mistake. I stared at her, unmoved by her theatrics. Nathan has made his decision, Marla, and it's the right one. Marla's face contorted with rage. How can you say that? We're family. You're supposed to support us. I shook my head, my heart hardening against her manipulation. You were never family, Marla. You were a parasite who tried to suck us dry. Marla recoiled as if I had slapped her. You don't mean that, she whispered. We can work through this. I promise I'll change. It's too late for promises, I said, my voice heavy with the weight of her betrayal. You've had your chance, Marla, and you squandered it. Marla's eyes flashed with fury, and for a moment I thought she might lash out. But then she seemed to deflate, her shoulders slumping in defeat. Fine, she spat. Have it your way, but don't come crawling back to me when you realize what a mistake you've made. As she turned to leave, I couldn't help but feel a sense of relief wash over me. We had finally cut ties with Marla, and now we could begin to heal and move on. You handled that well, Eli said, stepping into the room. I'm proud of you. I nodded, grateful for his support. I'm just glad it's over. I never want to see her face again. Eli placed a comforting hand on my shoulder. We'll make sure of that. Nathan has taken all the necessary legal steps to protect us. 
as the days passed, I could feel a sense of normalcy returning to our lives. Gone were the constant demands and manipulations of Marla, replaced by a newfound peace and harmony. Nathan, too, seemed to be healing. The weight of Marla's betrayal had been lifted, and I could see him rediscovering the joy and contentment that had been so elusive during their marriage. Thank you, he said one evening as we sat on the back porch watching the sun dip below the trees, for always being there for me, even when I couldn't see the truth. I smiled, reaching out to squeeze his hand. You're our son, Nathan. We'll always be there for you, no matter what. As we sat together in the peaceful silence, I couldn't help but feel a sense of gratitude for the journey we had been through. It had been difficult and painful, but we had emerged stronger and more united than ever before. It's a new beginning for us, I said, my voice filled with hope. A chance to start over and create the life we've always dreamed of. Eli nodded, his eyes shining with determination. And this time, we'll do it on our terms. No more manipulation, no more demands, just peace and happiness. As the night fell and the stars began to twinkle overhead, I felt a sense of contentment wash over me. We had faced down the darkness and emerged into the light, and I knew that no matter what challenges lay ahead, we would face them together as a family.